What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Hit the floor, season two, episode two, passing. And let me just say, it was a pretty good episode, pretty good. You know, they're keeping the momentum. They're not giving us so much so fast, which I can appreciate because I don't want to be damn near falling on the ground like, goddamn, each episode, I want to ease into this shit. And they easing into it. Okay, so they building it up. Um, Asha in the gym, you know, Olivia got killed last week. They found her body. And basically, that's basically the premise of this whole episode, her funeral and how people dealing with it. Um, Asha is in the gym at the Devil's Arena, I guess. And, you know, she's working out and, you know, she's crying and here comes Derek. She trying to vent her feelings and then Derek trying to comfort her and then Cal comes in because at one point they was hugging or whatever, an intimate hug, you know, and she's like, there are do uh, locks. Cal is like, bitch, you know, there's locks on this door because, you know, it could have been anybody that came up in this bitch. So Asha wants to get her feelings and be like, you can't touch me outside of, outside of your house. We can't do nothing. You know, don't even look at me. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me because I can get fired. You can't. Okay, girl, calm the fuck down. He gets it. Well, if he look like the Grammy type that'll just fuck around and fuck her up on purpose if she do something that she he don't like. But who knows? And then, you know, um, after that, we get Cal and her situation with this dude that she owed $350 to for her boyfriend or her baby daddy or whoever, uh, husband or whatever, on him money. And so they're trying to set people up. So she got to go back to her old ways of, you know, going after these rich athletes and, you know, individuals who actually got money like she used to do in the uh, way back days. So um, she setting up the boy Teddy from last season, the one that she fucked in the damn locker room locker. And one of them players actual lockers. I said, look at this tramp hoe. But I kind of like her. You better get your paper. Um... Salone having this meeting with all the girls and, you know, expressing her feelings about Olivia and saying basically that they're going to cancel a dance that they was going to have uh, for Oscar or whatever at this event that he was about to have. And they was going to cancel the rest of the rehearsal. Here come, and if you anybody need anything to talk about, you can always come to me. Here comes Yelena. Y'all, I said her name right. I said her name right. <laughs> Yes, y'all went ham up in the goddamn uh, comments. I'm like, y'all must don't read the comments because everybody else has said the pronunciation up in there. Some of y'all was being funny. Y'all was trying to break it up and be like, E, yeah, uh, E, what did I just say? God damn it, bitch. Yelena. Yelena. Pronounce it with the Y. Yeah, I was, and I can hear some of the sarcasm in the damn bitch. Get this shit right in them uh, comments. I know y'all because I'm saying I would have said the same damn way. And I was sitting here looking at some of them comments like, who the fuck y'all trying? Y'all tried me, but okay, I asked for it. It's cool. But, um, thank y'all. So, E, Yelena. There you go. Yelena. Anyway, she come up there to her and she like, um, we not canceling this shit. <laughs> Salon was like, I know you and Olivia had some um, issues and y'all did things differently, but this is me and we're going to grieve mm -hmm. and all this stuff. No, Olivia would have never canceled anything. That's how she rolled. I said, oops, okay. So um, Salon just went on ahead and had the little performance. Um, At this point in time, you got Dean Kane. What's his name? Pete talking to Asha. Well, first, German, you know, he's there as the uh, new coach, assistant coach or whatever to Pete. And um, he looking all stressed out like, God damn, this is a lot. I ain't even started yet, but this is a lot. How the fuck am I going to do this shit? So when he sees, um, they see him. Asha sees German. Then here comes Derek. Derek want to play games with him like, oh, now you get to really see how the shit works. And I was like, it's double-handed at what he's saying. Like, bitch, you couldn't be a basketball player, so all you could do is coach. Now you're going to see up close and front and personal what it's like to be a fucking basketball player in the big league. And also, you're going to be witness to the fact that I'm fucking your girl. Okay, that I took your girl. I was like, you is, you is cold-blooded, Derek. You know, and Asha was like, you need to calm that shit down. You really do. Don't do that shit. 
okay, or this is over and done with. I was like, Ashanae, you know, you need to stop playing because, hmm, we know, hmm. Then we have Salone talking to the detective guy, you know, basically about what's going on in the, um, because they basically put her in there. That's her main goal as, as to being the director of the Devil's Girls, trying to get deep inside the, uh, the Devil's organization to see what's going on and to set up Oscar to bring him down because all last season, bitch, I don't even remember. Did we even fi figure out what the fuck happened to Mia? Remember last season, that whole season was on what was happening to Mia. What did she know? I don't know. Did they kill her too? I don't remember. But either way, that's what everything hinged on. And we knew that um, Mia, um, Oscar was basically having that girl sleep with uh, these high rollers and, you know, to fix the games and all this stuff to get money out of them for this new arena. The same thing that Rick Fox was doing, you know, um, having people bet on the games or to lose or whatever to get money that's how he was getting money to his part in trying to get the new stadium up too so um Pete brings Asha into his office basically telling him or telling her you know about um the fact that he's dating Raquel and I want to tell you this before it gets out into the public or whatever, so you won't be caught off guard. But I am dating Raquel, and I do like her. And she was more receptive to the fact that he was dating her than the fact that, like, it just throws me off about Asha. I know that you feel some type of way because your mama kind of kept it away from you who your father was. That's one thing. And then they got into a relationship, and you caught them having sex. That's another thing. But that wouldn't have been enough for me to be so pissed off, like, especially... I mean, it, I'd be pissed, but I wouldn't be pissed so long that I wouldn't be talking to my mama and giving her all this attitude when that little thing outweighs, doesn't really outweigh the good that she's done. She just made one big mistake, and she had her reason not to tell you who the fuck Pete was. And, you know, it's not like y'all was suffering. It's not like she, you know, y'all grew up on Section 8 or some shit. It's not nothing like that. But I know people deal with stuff differently. And okay, yeah, I, I get being mad. But she just going, to me, she's just going a little bit too overboard with this attitude that she's giving her mother, but yet not giving Pete also. Because in my opinion, you know, Pete could have reached out to Salona and asked and asked and asked and asked. And then, you know, even though he probably, let's say he really didn't know, because I don't think he really knew, she still hurt him out and still giving him a chance more so than the mother. Maybe it's because, like I said, she kept it from her. So that's hurt a little bit deeper. But still, she could ease up on um, her mama. And that's basically what Pete was telling her. You know, your mama and Olivia had a little, you know, crazy relationship. So, you know, you should ease up on her and be that support that she needs. So when they doing the little dance and all that stuff, we see Salone sitting there in the um, practice room looking at some pictures of her and Olivia. And, um... Asha comes in there and doing the countdown, not the countdowns, but uh, basically offering to help her with the uh, performance and getting, you know, the place and right and all that stuff. And then she even actually kind of smiled at her like, okay, I'm going to finish start easing the fuck up and I'm going to let you in a little bit. And I was like, oh, you trying to grow the fuck up. Okay, so we get to this little event that Oscar is throwing that the Devil's Girl is going to um, be performing at. And there's Lionel. Okay, first Oscar comes up and he sees Pete and Raquel. And basically, that's what Pete just went on ahead to say, hey, Raquel's my date. And then, you know, Lionel sees Pete and Raquel. She's talking to Oscar's little son, Jude, like, um, I thought you said that you, so Oscar telling me that you tell him that I'm going to be at all the games front and center. But what did I say to that agreement? No Oscar, um, no Raquel and them together. But who's together? Look over there. There's Pete and Raquel together. He was like, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. And the way he goes about fixing it is going over there to tell Pete, asking him, it's alone, you know, single. And I heard back in the day she had this type of reputation. And the way that she got this uh, reputation. What did I say? Girl, please. The way that she got her job is that she probably fucked around to get this um, 
director's job. And Pete tried to keep it cool and be like, you know, that's not none of my concern no more. But until he said that shit about her trying, possibly sleeping around to get that damn job that she got now, Pete lost it and punched that motherfucker in his face, which was much deserved. Um, the girls do the, the, the dance. We get zero back at the <laughs> back at the gym before the dance. He meets up with uh Yelena and was like, "So when you want to do this date?" And she was like, "Boo, don't you know I just said that shit to make um Terrence jealous? This ain't nothing. We ain't finna go on no date." He was like, "By the end of this week, we will, boo. You know." So they go to the um. They go to the little thing and they meet up and they doing this cat and mouse game too at the little event or whatever. Uh, Terrence basically in his feelings about the fact that, you know, they meeting up. Well, yeah, uh, Yelena was in her feelings about the fact that Terrence was with that woman. The woman who was the doctor that's trying to help him. And he don't realize that she, well, she don't know that. And then, you know, I think Terrence kind of peep game on what Zero doing. And so she was like, you wanted me to be happy. So, hey, fuck you too. And I was like, oh, okay, y'all playing games. Do y'all think Terrence and Yelena going to get back together? I think they're going to be fucking on a low. And I think it's going to, um, I think Zero and Terrence going to get into a fight. Something about Zero seems like he a fake person or something. Like he a put on a face for whoever needs to be, who and whoever needs to be in front of. But he's fake. And he got secret motive. That's what he felt like to me, you know. Um, he just comes across that way. But, because when he told Yelena, he was like, we can go back to my big mansion and I'm worth millions. She was like, bitch, you must not know me. That don't, that shit don't work on me. Okay, I'm not that girl. It takes more than that to impress me. I said, well, damn. Okay. You know, so, um. Um, after that, we just go, we, we got Cal in her situation with the guy that's trying to get the money. She, um, with the, the boy Teddy in her apartment, trying to sell him this fake script about her life story. She was about to get $50,000 from him. And then, you know, right when she was saying yes, and she doing all this screaming and all this stuff. But she wasn't in trouble. You know, she was getting dude all hyped and shit. Here come the other guy come in, busting in. I thought you was hurt. I thought he was hurting you. I heard screaming. She was like, I'm a screamer. Shut the fuck up. I'm working. Dude leaves. She can't get him back. But then she comes up with this thing. Okay, I'm going to invite you to the damn funeral. The whole devil's nation's going to be there. So everybody is at the funeral. Zero comes up on um Yelena and see her... Uh, outside and she she was like didn't I tell you I want I want trying to fuck with you and all this shit don't impress me he was like yeah but you would want to pull up in that funeral looking like this in this car and I said oops and she got in that car now I don't know exactly what they did in that car I don't know if Yelena smoked a little something drank a little something or what because when they was at the funeral Yelena gets up there to speak on behalf of the devil's girl okay and she's talking about Olivia being this good person. <laughs> and, you know, I want to be half the woman that she... <laughs> That's what she was doing. I said, wait a minute. Is she up here laughing? Now, whether she was high, drunk, or maybe I'm going to say... I don't want to say that... We already know she's evil to a certain extent. But I don't want to say that she was just that evil and disrespectful to do that shit right at this girl's funeral. I want to say that she was laughing to keep from crying. That's what I want to say. But if there's any other way, girl, you wrong as fuck for that shit. You dirty. But, um, you know, Zero comes in to say today. And he giving his little speech. And, you know, he don't really know Olivia. But he quoted scriptures and all this shit. And did at the end. And the whole time, Yelena is up there. Moist than a motherfucker. Like, mm. We gonna bang. And sure enough, I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? Next thing you know, they fucking in the confessional. And I said, God did not say yes to this shit. God did not say yes. You don't do this in church. Y'all take it a little too far. I don't even go to church. And I'm like, no, you don't do that. But um, say yes. Make sure y'all go uh, pick up Michelle Williams. Go download. Say yes. 
um, Michelle Williams' new song. It's a banger, okay? You ain't even got to be all that into the gospel to listen to it. Because, look, bitch, like I said, you can twerk off of it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the beat is cool. Kind of sound like grown woman a little bit to me. Beyonce, that's what it is, the beat a little bit. The African beat. Okay, now that we got that out the way. Because they are doing some devilish things in this church, okay? Fornication and all this shit. And, you know, when they got through and they going to the burial site, <laughs> he was like... So, this was a good first date. And then she was like, bitch, this was not no date. It was like black tie event. Get you up in a nice ride and all this shit. Come on now. We have biblical sex. When he said biblical sex, I died. <laughs> biblical sex, that was funny to me. But, um, we got Lionel talking to Jew like I thought you was going to handle this shit. And he was like, just take time. It's going to um, unfold on its own. Okay. So... Raquel is standing back in the back, and then Asha's standing there. Pete is talking to Salone because when they was at the little thing, the little event that they was dancing at, Yelena was like, hmm, a new love in his life, huh? Talking about Raquel and Pete. That's when Salone figured out that they was going together. So at the funeral, you know, Pete talking to her about it, and he was basically like, I can move on too. I got to move on too. And Salone didn't really, she kind of seemed a little salty, but she didn't, you know, put too much on it. But here goes the issue. When Raquel telling Asha, like, you know, um, I, I appreciate the fact that you being cool with our relationship. And she was like, it's cool. You know, just as long as you happy. And as long as I ain't got to um, walk in on y'all having sex like I did him and my mama. And she was like, Raquel was like, er, who? Your mama and Pete? Since when? This was like two weeks ago. Raquel was over it. And was like, bitch, I am not here to be a fucking rebound or whatever the fuck you want this to be, okay? I am out of here. Lionel and Jude looking like, hmm, well, there it go. It ended quicker than we thought. But um, the cop dude was there. And Asha at the uh, funeral, you know, telling Derek, just stand next to me and don't say nothing. Next thing you know, she reaching. We see from behind because... Yelena goes up and, you know, she's looking like she want to, you know, trying to hide the fact that she's emotional or she don't want to cry. But she looks down and she see Asha trying to grab her hand, his hand. And I said, no, 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 no. You got, you keep giving Yelena all this stuff to just go against you. You have to be on your toes, Asha. You're not being smart. She never really was. But you're not being smart, okay? You, you, this girl has been after you. And you just giving her ammunition after ammunition. And I think the reason why, you know, Terrence and her got away with dating is because she owns part of the organization. So, there you go. And he in the car, his knee fucked up. He looking at that drugs and shit that was in the car that um, Yelena had drugs him with or whatever. And he debating on taking it. Then all of a sudden, the police come up. Detectives come up to the funeral. Bust that shit up. Who the, I'm thinking they finna get Oscar. Bitch. They done arrested Rick Fox, a.k.a. Chase. And I said, what? For the murder of his wife, Olivia Benson. I said, clutch pearls, what? And then I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. I believe that he didn't do it. And then as soon as they said him, as soon as they said you're under arrest for um, the murder of your wife, bitch, I knew it was Oscar that set him up. Because it's like, we found the shovel in your um the trunk of your car. Now, how the fuck? And he ain't that dumb, okay? He is not that dumb. Because earlier, Salone at that party was talking to an old devil's girl that got fired. And she was like, she didn't get fired. Um, Salon, uh, Oscar made her leave and wiped all of Olivia's uh, computer clean and all that shit. And basically, that's why the detective was like, girl, you're getting in too deep. You're getting in too deep on the next episode. But... <laughs> That's what I was like. Oscar is just doing the most for everybody. He is trying to cover up all his tracks. So that was make me think Oscar had something to do with Olivia dying. He probably killed her. I don't, I'm not going to say that he killed her himself, but he probably put that hit out for her to be killed. Set up his hus her husband, you know, because as soon as um, Chase left, Oscar had this smile on his face like, hmm, I got it. Hmm. Worked. Just like taking candy from a baby. That's how he was. And I was like, oh, shit. This is fucked up. But that was uh, 
that was um what is this called hit the floor i'm loving it so far and um yeah y'all tell me how y'all feel about it and i'll see y'all later